Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the much belated next entry to the Castlevania Marathon. And this time we are going to the second iteration of Rondo of Blood, which is actually my least favorite, which is ah, Castlevania Dracula X for the Super Nintendo. Let's get started. So yeah, there are three iterations of Rondo of Blood altogether. This is the second iteration. And my least favorite, believe it or not. For reasons I'll get to while we go through playing this. And interesting enough, one of my buddies, this actually happens to be one of his favorites. As to why, well, that's an argument, that's a debate even I can't win with him on no matter how much I try to convince him. Anyways. On hindsight, the artwork isn't half bad, and as you can tell in the intro, it's just Maria and Annette you have to save. But for this one, I really don't care if I get the bad ending or not, so because, well, let's uh, find out, shall we? There are only two alternate stages. And while the graphics do look much better than the um, typographic CD version, which I'm not gonna lie, but everything else, like stage structure, it's practically very different. And also, while Richter can still does his uh, backwards flip jump, it looks like he does, gets a little more distance. And I kind of feel like you don't get a lot of traction with it either, when you land. So I could probably understand why there wasn't all they wouldn't be able to cram in like everything from the CD version, but don't even. So yeah, stage one, and already we got Medusa heads flying at you. The sound department does sound much better. Well, sound effects are considered. And the chiptone music is fairly faithful. No, I want to keep that axe. And I said axe, not ass. Ugh. 
Why would I want to look at that? <clears throat> Anyways. And the behemoth, actually, as long as you get to right here, it collapses to its death in a fiery explosion. And we do get some different bosses in this game, believe it or not, compared to um, Rondo of Blood. Some of the same as Rondo of Blood, with different notices, some are brand new altogether, such as... That thing! Whoop! Well, that helps. Oops. I meant to do just a standard attack. Ow! And it's done. However... No? Was it over the other side? Hang on. Nope. So just like uh, the TurboGrafx CD version, if you do beat a stage without, with full health, you do get an extra life. Well, actually, probably if you take zero damage at all, but you get the gist of it. Anywho's... Stage two. If there's one thing about the stage design in this game I do not like, bottomless pits are everywhere. And I mean everywhere. And since I got a lot of points, that gave me an extra life. There we go. And other than bottomless pits, these assholes are brought back in full force. as painful as ever. There we go. Gave me points, and that's fine. All right. Oh, 
Come on. Come on. Nope, nope. Get away. We're almost there. So yeah, I used up a bunch of my hearts and it's okay. Ooh, ow! Get off me. He's done. So the bat returns from run with blood, but it attacks differently every time it takes hits. Kind of annoying. So this is the one stage that will determine whether you get the good or bad innings on two factors. Factor number one is if you fall to a bottomless pit, a certain area of bottomless pits, that will take you to the alternate stages where you don't want to go if you intend on getting the uh, good ending. Factor number two is that you make sure you clear the stage and get the key item, which means you will not be using sub items for a while until you use it on the two doors that's required. There we go. That takes care of them. And we got another extra guy. Perfect. Take care of him. Whew. That was close. We got him here. No. Let's keep the knife. Here we go. So yeah, I should mention that uh, pot roast is actually in candles. No, I don't want the watch. The watch is practically useless. I mean, it it won't freeze enemies, but it just slows them down. Kind of a far cry from what it's known for. Ow. There we go. All right. This is always the one area that throws me off because of the bottomless pits. There we go. Alrighty. I'm gonna take care of that axe armor real quick. Come on over. There we go. Now then. One up. That brings it up to five. Perfect. Now, let's see what type of ending I'm going to end up getting. So, get the throwing axe, that's fine. Yeah. 
In fact, believe it or not, the throwing axe is actually the prima choice I would use for the fight against Dracula. And I am not even kidding at this point. There we go. So far, so good. No, nope. no, nope. ah. And we're gonna get the bad ending. So here we go. Had I made it, it would have been that headless knight that I would have fought earlier. the red knight armors. There we go. I think I'll hold on to this weapon. Get bats. Now, in the normal version of this stage, aside from the usual trope that we're seeing, I would have also had to put up with those god awful fleamen. And you know how I feel about fleamen. Ow. Reminders to whether. Yikes! Got about him! Ooh! Ow! There we go. I totally forgot about him. There we go. I do know that the boss in this version of this stage is the Necromancer. In the normal version, if you didn't uh, get the key to go to the real stage 5, or alternate stage 5, as well as um, rescuing uh, Maria, you would have fought the Minotaur from Rondo Flood. Ow. Whoa, what do we got in here? Ah, yes. Need it. And in this stage, the boss fight is the um, Necromancer. Behaves almost like Shaft, but not quite. It's when you fight um, Annette, who's possessed, turned into a demon, demoness riding on a skull who behaves like Shaft, attacks and all. So, the Necromancer, this one's actually somewhat original to this game. Ow. And of course, when you get hit by him, you slow down exponentially. Uh -huh. 
and he has two phases to his fight. So that was phase one. This is phase two. Ah, turn around. And he's done. Wait for it. <laughs> Ow. So yeah, they still have kamikaze attacks, apparently. And that's fine. Now, had I saved the girls, when I get to the clock tower fight, you would be facing off against uh, death like normal. And he plays exactly like Rondo of Blood. Anyways. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there they are. Uh -huh. And they're dro and instead of birds, they're being dropped in by bats. Oh, you evil motherfuckers! Evil motherfuckers! Oh. What the? Okay, that was grade A bullshit right there. They should have fell straight down those stairs, not be able to climb up on them. Thankfully, I know where some hidden meat is, so it's a matter of getting to that area. It's up here. All right. Well, on the other side, I should say. Yikes. Yikes. There we go. There we go. And, uh, yikes, that's too close. That's too close. There, he's dealt with. I think it's this candle, but I could be wrong. Yep, it is. Now yeah, it's just a matter of getting to where I need to be. That's one. Yeah, you keep backing up. Yeah, 
Yikes! Whew. Alrighty then. Get back over here. There we go. Just care of him. Wanna make sure there's nothing hidden that I could be used. Let's see if I can grab a few more hearts if feasible. Ah. Stupid. Alright, let's try this again. There, got the bird. At least. Come here. There we go. Mm, come on over here. There we go. All right, here we go. Another returning boss is the werewolf. Oh. Ow. 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 Oh. Ah! And I almost got him. I practically had him, too. Alright, let's try that again. Ow. Damn birds. Hang on. Alright, well, I got plenty of lives, but still. It's the principle of the thing, you know? And he's done. All right. On to the godforsaken clock tower. (laughs) 
and let's try and keep the... Well, actually, no. Let's get the dagger sub-weapon, because that's going to make the fight a bit better. Nah. I know, I'm kind of changing my mind back and forth, but... Alright. Well, at least I got enough hearts. Take care of the damn birds! Uh, I'm sure somewhere in the great beyond, Alfred Hitchcock's getting his kicks out of this. Ow! Now then, and I know where I can get some health, so it's a matter of getting there. There we go. Hearts check. Now let's get back over there. Alright. Alright. It's this section. I blame it on enemy placement in this area. Yikes! Yikes! A little so close. Nope, don't need that. gotten hearts. Oh well. There we go. Ah! Ah! Damn it. That was stupid. Got enough lives at least. Ow. Bad timing on my part. Anyways, moving on. Uh, of course. We got these assholes. Alright, got the axe at least. Help check. Whew. 
Whew, made it. Alrighty. And I'm gonna do a save state, just for the hell of it. You'd never know. Anyways. Plus, I get an extra life. Yay! And now uh, to keep the axe, I think it does slightly more damage. Fate is one cruel mistress. And she's done. And I got just the sub weapon I need to finish this game. And here we go. Yep. Those iconic stairs. Except his chamber is actually a little more elaborate in this game, surprisingly. There we go. Ow. Thank you for the meat. I actually needed it. There we go. Alright, that was fairly easy. Now then, it's just this part I gotta worry about. Alrighty. And we got plenty of hearts, so... Safe state. Let's go. Now, admittedly, Topograph C version encounter with him was easy, but this is ridiculous with the bottomless pits. That's why it's best to stay in one spot. More specifically, this one. It's probably actually the safest one to be in. Ah, could have done better with that one. Oh no. Ah! 
No, 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 no. Load that back up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, one false move and your ass is dead. I really want to know who's the pinhead who designed this. Because I don't mind bottomless pits for an obstacle, but this is just overkill. That was a missed opportunity. There we go. Two good hits. And that's actually a good spot. There we go. Ugh, come on. Get your undead ass over here. There you are. At least I got some hits on him. Not the most convenient spot, but whatever. Come on. Alright, first form's almost done. Uh uh. No! Ah! Bitch! Here we go again. There we go. Come on. If this age won't kill me, it's my lack of patience that will. And it's usually just this first part of the fight. Come on. Alright, getting a little closer. Best just stuck. Ah, 
All right. That is what I want. Now, get the hell back over there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's fine. Come on. One more. You're done. <sighs> That's that. Now, this... Now then, like I said, this is not my preferred iteration of Rondo of Blood. I mean, now the artwork looks good. That's and not to mention the sound department is both sound effects was a tremendous uh, leap as well as uh, the chip tunes were fairly faithful to the original Red Book audio um, arrangements, but. Almost everything else just fell flat on its face. So, well, I think they could have done it, but Konami just dropped the ball on this one, so... <sighs> but... That pretty much covers um, the 16-bit era in the long run, so... Unfortunately... That era, this kind of made the, as far as Castlevania is concerned, make that era go out with a little bit of a whimper. Which is a huge shame when you look at all the other companies, like Capcom, Square. They, every final outings for the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, went out with a bang. Konami here, they just, it went out with a whimper. Which is not a good way to go. And thankfully, hold on. And thankfully, Kochi Igarashi had nothing to do with this that I'm aware of. So, there is that at the very least. And uh, that takes care of Dracula X from the Super Nintendo. When we next meet up, we will be going into what I consider the best one in the franchise, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Till then, thank you guys for watching. You know, stay safe, wipe your ass and all that, wash your hands, have a fan freaking tastic night, and I will see you next time.